Uh, okay. Speaking, speaking of Sam Jackson. Oh yeah. Um, so Marvel Secret Invasion episode six today, mm-hmm. uh, the finale presumably of the entire show. Yep. Um, we're going to talk about it. We're going to spoil it. Uh, before we get into this, uh, I was dis- I was disappointed by the end of this, and okay. um, it I knew that that it was going to be thirty minutes, and it, and I was like, if the next episode's thirty minutes, there's no way they've got enough time to wrap everything up and and have it be satisfying. And um, I, while I did enjoy the show, um, I, and I would watch it again, uh, the the ending didn't stick for me, and at the end I was like, eh, okay. I was disappointed because the first two episodes were almost an hour long each. And then the next one was like 45. And then all the ones after it were about 30. Yeah. And it's like, you've, you've shown that you're willing to do episodes of a Marvel show to, to full hour length. Why not just do the whole thing? Yeah. It's, I I know why it's, it it costs more money and, um, they had a pretty big budget for this show. So over $200 million or something. I understand that. And what they should have done with that kind of money would have been a, a film that was meant to put on Disney plus. However, that does not drive subscribers. You must have something week to week. Mm -hmm. And so to serve that goal, they cut it up and into weirdly sized things that it was harder to manage the story and everything. Uh, And I think that's really the part of it that that really kind of irritates me is that it it was cut up to drive subscriber numbers for for Disney Plus, which I, you know, what are you basing that on? uh, I mean, that's what they do for everything that that's that's the whole point of have. That's why they don't do the Netflix thing and put everything out in one go. No, I mean, for this particular story, what what are you basing your argument that it was cut up on Uh, historical data? Literally all the other all the other Disney Plus shows are the same way, and it just kind of seems like that's that's their template for for doing all of their shows. Because I know Obi Wan was explicitly meant to be a movie or two, and it was cut mm-hmm. up into episodes. But I I don't oh I don't I'm not saying that that originally like in the early phases of development that Secret Invasion was a movie. I'm just saying that they had they could have taken 200 million dollars put a movie on disney plus but decided not to because it didn't it didn't i don't think it was ever envisioned as a movie though i don't think it was either but i'm i'm saying if you got 200 million dollars you're going to spend on something like this make it into a movie so that it, like it's it's easier to maintain a um uh, a coherent story okay and instead just being like oh we're going to have you know these sh- short little episodes that way week to week people won't cancel their disney plus which is stupid because I don't pay for it anyway. So it, it, so for me, it really has no impact. Also, I really hated that at the end of this thing, it's just another fucking Marvel, two super powered people punching each other. Do you honestly expect anything else from Marvel at this point? Yeah, I, I and this one, this one is. I mean, historical data. Yeah, what I Marvel show hasn't ended? Like I understand. That? What oh, Marvel movie look, hasn't I'm ended. Not, I'm like not saying that. I was super surprised. Uh, it, like it, I, I was not surprised. And it was better than like Moon Knight, which are just big kaiju looking things yeah. slapping each other, right? I, like, okay. All right, and a big laser beam in the sky. Because there's always a laser beam in the mm-hmm. sky in Marvel properties, right? And this one is a little more inventive than that. Yeah. And we'll talk about why. But I was like, eh. Okay. I get it. They're both strong and they punch each other. <laughs> like, what the fuck ever. Okay. So previously on Secret Invasion, it we're spoiling this, by the way. If you've mm-hmm. not seen it, it just came out today. Go watch it. Come back. Let us know what you think in the comments as well. We're, we're interested in, in, in hearing from you. Previously on, scrolls are everywhere. Mm-hmm. They're in your government. They're in your neighborhoods. They're under your beds. Sometimes Sonya shoots one just to prove that it's a scroll. Yeah. Rebels, so like this rebel cell scrolls are pissed because Nick Fury and Carol Danvers didn't find a home and now they got to make Earth their home and kill the humans, mm-hmm. right? Yep. They need the harvest, which is a bunch of DNA to make them into super scrolls mm-hmm. with superpowers. So we open on, on a, in a dark alley, which is like where Nick Fury likes to live. He's like, ooh, that looks good for me, dark alley. And he's uh, he's like making a phone call to his honey. He likes dark alleys more than he likes his wife's house, apparently. Yeah. He, he, what a weird relationship, by the way. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that by the yeah. end. So his wife Priscilla answers and is like, well, shit, you haven't called this number in years. And he's like, well, listen, I've actually dialed it like a million times, but I never hit send because I'm old and I can't figure out how cell phones work. And I just learned how to make a call on this fucking thing. And she's like, okay, well, that explains everything. You sound really far away. And he says... 
a really interesting line that I really liked. This is one thing I liked about this show a lot. I, I think the dialogue writing is yeah. really good. I love this conversation because there's layers of meaning, just yeah. like there is in it's a real always, relationship to yeah. people who know each other for right. years. It's, it's always, um, and, and you can tell with them even more, it's always a game to figure out what the other one means because yeah. of who they are, mm -hmm. right? And it, like, I, I totally get that. So he says... Um, yeah, I'm far enough uh, uh, where it makes sense to keep going the way that I'm going. And like, she's like, okay, so we're doing the cryptic thing. <laughs> Are you coming back home? And he's like, uh, I'll just let you go. And she's like, here's an idea. You could not. And he's like, I'm Nick motherfucking Fury. Take care of yourself. Bye, bitch. Hangs <laughs> up, right? And she's got this look. Like, she hangs up and he's like, okay, how do I decode that? What does he want me to do? <laughs> like, what does this mean? <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, there's an armed gate at New Skrullos, which is in Russia. It's one of the abandoned mm -hmm. uh, nuclear power plants. Right? We saw this in episode one when when Beto drives up. Right. It's the same two guards. Right. So a car approaches real fucking slow. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't stop when it's ordered to. And so they, I like that they have like a little procedure. Yeah. They, like, hey, they tell stop. them to stop. Doesn't stop. They, they do the warning shot. Shoot in the yeah. air. And they're like, uh, stop. All right. Well, we're, we're, start we're, shooting we're, you. You're fucking kill that guy. So, doesn't stop when it's ordered. They open fire, but the car is empty, right? And they're like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? Okay. And so they go, they go and investigate, and they just get shot. <laughs> and you're like, okay. So okay. Yeah, so sense. here's Nick Nick Fury, right? They both get capped, which, by the way, if you're going to get capped, get capped by Nick Fury. It's pretty fucking cool. And he like, looks around, and he's like, okay, well, that was kind of easy. I like how like the two scrolls are lying down on the ground. Nick Fury walks out of the woods, just shoots yeah. one just, just to make sure. Double tap. Mm -hmm. So... At a random hospital in Europe where the president in the United States is recovering from Presumably this. Presumably in England. Yeah. But. He's, he's recovering from the assassination attempt. Mm -hmm. And Rhodey's there with him. And he's like, okay, I need you to focus on the puppet work I've given you. you, you we need to bomb Russia and start an international scene. Mm -hmm. And there's a m member of the military there, like uh, maybe part of the Joint Chiefs or something. He, he she, calls her Admiral. She, yeah, she's in the, she'd be in the Navy, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and she's like, yeah, so we're not sure they were Russians. And Rhodey's like, what the fuck? Why? And she's like, because they kept running around screaming, we're Russians, we're Russians, look at us, we're Russians. <laughs> and Rhodey's like... That seems kind of suspicious. Yeah, and Rhodey's like, yeah, because they were the Russians. Russians. And she's like, I mean, they were screaming it in English. So, <laughs> also, the Russian president has strenuously denied it was them, and you don't strenuously deny anything if you don't mean business. True. And Rhodey's like, so... If you can't trust a Russian president, who can you trust? Is that, is that really the argument you're making right now? And she's like, yeah, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I, I think it was a false flag attack and not like the Alex Jones kind. Actually, shit, probably the Alex Jones kind because they are reptilian looking aliens and I'm sure at least one or two of them are gay. Fuck was Alex Jones right all, <laughs> Jones right all along. And he's like, okay, look, your job is to present options to the president for retaliation. And she's like, what exactly is your job again? Because no one knows. And he's like, it's very ill-defined. My job is to tell the president what to yeah. do. Yeah, it's very ill-defined and unbelievably flexible. For example, in this moment, I'm the secretary of defense, I think. Here's a video of Russia mobilizing troops. Now I'm going to be the White House communications director. Here's a statement I drafted for the president. <laughs> Please start bombing Russia for fuck's sake. <laughs> so at New Scrolls, Fury is stumbling through this abandoned nuclear, Russian nuclear thing. Mm -hmm. And apparently the radiation is like getting to him, he's right? He's coughing and wheezing and falling over and shit. He's popping iodide pills and um, he just stumbles his way right mm -hmm. meanwhile roadie gets a phone call from sonia fallsworth and she's like you need to get him out of there and roadie's like what who and he's like who the fuck do you think the president of the united states like literally the only patient in this whole fucking hospital because you kicked everyone else out jesus fucking christ americans are stupid and he's like okay i'll bite why and she's like well I mean, Fury is coming for you. And <laughs> he's like, I mean, we have enough security here to deal with him. And she's like, yeah, he's on a rampage. Like he's going to kill literally all of you and your families. So uh, get moving. And there's like, like you see this realization, Brody's like, oh, he might be mad. Like we better get out of he here. He might actually be coming. <laughs> there's this great shot of Fallsworth, like looking like through the door window. Yeah, like, oh, look, that worked. Yeah. Hospital. Which by the way, um, you and I watched uh, uh, an episode of the bear the mm -hmm. other night, which, it's quickly becoming one of my favorite shows in the world. It's it's amazing, yeah. and the uh, that actor uh, Olivia something 
is in it for a scene and is one of my favorite scenes, probably top five favorite scenes in all of TV ever. And it's just two people talking to each other, Mm -hmm. which is like when you can make that shit interesting to me, like that's pretty fucking cool. Um, So anytime I see her in something, I'm like, ah, I love her. She's so cool. So Fury finds Gravik. And he's like standing in the super scroll chamber and uh, Fury looks like he's really sick and mm-hmm. he, like he drops his pills and Gravik's like, well, that sucks. It's just too bad you're not a scroll because the radiation would be harmless to yeah, you. Yeah, it's pretty nice being immune to radiation. Yeah. So here, have a drink. And he, he gives Fury his hip flask and Fury like, think fuck. Gulps it down. Yeah. And he's like, well, look at the mighty Nick Fury. How far are you falling? So Rhodey has started evacuating the president. Mm-hmm. Right. And he tells the Secret Service, he's like, you see Fury fucking kill him. He's a national security threat. But his men start getting hit by some kind of silence projectile. Mm-hmm. A couple of them will fall over and their bodies are dragged into an <laughs> empty room. Right. So meanwhile, Gravik, like, is in the mood to monologue. Yeah. <laughs> he is, this is a good scene. Yeah. So he's like, well, 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 your last 20 minutes alive and you're here with me. And, and he's like, just eat my ass, man. <laughs> and he's like, tell me you have a backup plan. You got like Avengers on on standby on speed dial. Someone's like Thor is going to run in here and beat my ass with a hammer or something. Mm-hmm. And um, Gravik reveals that the face that he took, the human face that he took, was the first person that Fury ever ordered him to kill. And uh, from the way he talks about it, isn't sure that he deserved to die and, yeah. and feels kind of bad about it. Well, he says like he was maybe a little misguided, but he had a family, he right. had a wife and kids. And, and I took that from him because you told me to. Yeah. And so who's the real bad guy here? Fury. Right. And I like how Fury is like, oh, God, God, are we really doing this. So he, he monologues about how many like people he killed and, and about how Fury failed them. And, and he's mm-hmm. like, he goes on, where's our fucking home Fury. Right. And he goes on about how like Talos was weak, which gives gets this like particularly special glare from Fury, right? And so Gravik's like, okay, so here's the deal. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill humanity. And it's going to be literally all your fault. You're going to die knowing that all this shit happened because you didn't keep your promise. And Fury's like, yeah, okay. I kind of dropped the ball on that. Like I, I knew within a few years that we couldn't find a planet for you. My thought was if I could... If I could do it, I could build you a home here. And Gravik's like, what the fuck, man? Why didn't you? <laughs> like, yeah, everything would have been fine. Like, we had to do it ourselves because yeah. you were busy sitting on your ass. Yeah, even if you told us that's what you were doing. Mm-hmm. Like, this could have not happened. <laughs> God damn it. If you could just communicate yeah. a little bit, Nick yeah. Fury. Why didn't you say something? And he's like, because humans are fucking terrible. And it's way easier to save 8 billion people than it is to change their stubborn fucking minds. And Gravik's like, yeah, I get that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's yeah. true. And he's like, like his, his literal line is like, even for Nick Fury. Mm-hmm. And to me, like a perfect line would have been, especially for Nick. Fury. Yeah. That would have been Nick yeah. Fury is not a people person. Yeah. He is a shoot you and blow up your car yeah. person, <laughs> which is what I love about it. We should be in the writer's room for these. <laughs> I think we could do a good job. So Fury is like, then I got dusted. And it turns out, weirdly, the last thing I felt was a relief that I didn't have to put up with the human race anymore. I didn't have to yeah. save anyone. I didn't have to feel underappreciated. I just got to fucking sweet oblivion. Like, the, Here this I come. kind of sucks, but at least I don't have to exist anymore. Right. So, Which is a very relatable thought. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially when you hit your 30s and you're like, I don't want to be here anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> especially uh, the world that we live in. So while Fury is talking... Uh, Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I had to remind us. So Fury and Gravik are, are, are talking. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, uh, Rhodey is trying to evacuate President, and his men just keep disappearing, right? It's like you turn a corner, and it's like a guy is missing. And then yeah. you turn another corner, and a guy is missing, right? They turn back to the first guy, and, and now another right. guy is missing. All, all the while, the, uh, these scenes are, are cut with a voiceover from Fury. Mm-hmm. He was like, I came back for you because I felt responsible that I didn't teach you how to not be a little bitch and give up the fight. Anyway, here's what you want. Carol Danvers DNA, <laughs> which by the way, theory confirms. I, yes. I was sure like, if you're going to get one Avengers fucking DNA, get Carol Danvers. Well, the thing is it's all of there. Yeah. Which is weird. It's like just putting uh, like yeah, cocktail. I, I don't know. How Everything's yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Gravik's like, wait, really? Yeah. He's like, 
this seems really easy. And he's like, yeah, well, like, look, I'll give it to you. I want you to leave Earth. Go terrorize a, like a different planet just, and its people. Just get the fuck out of here. And, I and literally don't, don't give a fuck. <laughs> Go to any planet anywhere and just leave us alone. And um, Gravix like, or I could just take it from you, super scroll myself and continue with my master plan, you fucking idiot. And he takes the DNA from him and he puts it in the science YNC machine, right? Mm-hmm. And he like loads something up. The only people left in the hospital now are Rhodey, the president, and one Secret Service agent with a broken arm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fucking useless, right? And so, like, Rhodey tries to back them into a room and finds that he's at gunpoint and it's fucking Sonia Falls. Yeah, he opens the door, like looks around once and says, it's all clear. And then there's gunpoint at the yep. back of his head. And Sonia's like, you're a fucking idiot, yeah. aren't you? You didn't check behind the door? <laughs> like Americans are really just so fucking stupid. No, what she says is, you are you, a you, scroll, you, yeah, you must be a scroll, right? Uh, and so she's like, get your ass back in that hallway. And so he, you know. Mm-hmm. So Gravik activates the super scroll machine. And it goes off with him and Fury inside. And all of a sudden, Gravik is like tall and buff. Mm -hmm. It looks kind of hulky. Yeah. And um, Fury is still Fury. Just standing there, which you would expect because he's human, right? So they they pontificate. All right, I'm going to kill you now. Yeah, it's time to die. Goes to punch him. Fucking Fury grabs fists in midair, one arm. (laughs) And you're like, oh, shit. He's a scroll. Wait a minute. Yeah. (laughs) And... uh, Gravik realizes that it's not Nick Fury, it's Gaia. Now, because I like Spycraft movies, I love the Mission Impossible movies, I knew that there was going to be one rip off the mask moment, right? Because yeah. it, it's it's just embedded in the genre, that's how it works, and it's, you know, that's that's what you come to expect. It's that it's that promise thing we're talking about. When, when you, you make promises based on genre to your audience, you have mm-hmm. to pay them off, right? He's like, oh, shit. And Gaia's like, you killed my parents, you called my dad a little bitch, now we're going to have a fight. My name is Gaia, whatever my last name is. You killed my parents. Prepare to die. Yeah. At the hospital, the last remaining Secret Service agent hits the floor. And <laughs> Fury appears in the hallway with a train gun. And this poor guy, by the way, had his arm broken by Fury like a few days earlier, right? He's like, just leave me the fuck alone. I don't want this anymore. So that's the president on his gurney with a gun. <laughs> yeah. And Rhodey, who is held at gunpoint, right? Mm-hmm. And Fury's like, look. Rhodey's a scroll. If you don't call off your strike, you're going to kill the real Rhodey along with a bunch of real fucking smart humans. And he kind of explains what's going on. And he like he looks at Rhodey. He's like, that's true. Is that true? And he's like, no. Of course it's, it's not. He's right. a fucking idiot. What are you talking about? I am about? surprised in this moment. Sonya didn't just shoot him in the head. Just to prove a point. See, I, I would have thought you like you shoot him in the arm or something. I, so, just so that You're talking about hurts? Sonya Fallsworth. I think she just would have shot him in the head. She shot the SIS guy in the leg. That's true. He wasn't a scroll, though. Yes, he was. It was oh no 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 yeah, yeah he was head. yeah yeah yeah. So Gravik and Super Gaia have a fight, and they're using arrays of different powers, right? Mm-hmm. And I kind of listed that. So she uses the uh, phasing in and out from Ghost, uh, the uh, Ghost from Ant Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Gravik does the abomination thing. Mm-hmm. Gaia has Drax's arm at one point, yep. and then also like uh, another point has. Korg's arm and a frost beast icicle thing. Yeah. Like and at one point, uh, fucking Gravit kicks her with a Hulk leg. Yeah. Uh, they both have Captain Marvel powers. I love this fight because they go through all these different powers, and then at some point they both realize, wait a minute, I have Carol Danvers powers. Yeah. Let's just fucking blast the right. shit out of you. So uh, Gravik does an ebony maw thing where he uses like tel- like uh, telekinesis to like yep. move some rocks around or some some shit. Um. And so, yeah, they have this fight, and it's kind of a CGI mess. Yeah. Um, I thought it looked fine. It, it was it was fine. It, it wasn't as bad as, like, Moon Knight, right? Yeah. It, oh, at one point, Gaia uses uh, Mantis's powers to... Well, that, that's how she ends the fight, yeah. right? But they're, like... They're, right, you're exactly right where they're, like, oh, I'm invincible, right? I have all these powers. Yeah. Let's just fucking... And they're, they're shooting the, the Carol's plasma shit at each other, and... Um, and then they're they're like, oh yeah, right, we can fly. Yeah. <laughs> and so they end up in in they the air. They fly now. They yeah. fly now. And so Gaia turns into Mantis and is like, and you're sleepy now. <laughs> and he just dead weight yep. falls, falls to the out ground. Of the sky. Right? Um, at the hospital. Um. Oh wait, she. So 
basically what happens is Gaia kills Gravik with a with Captain Marvel's plasma mm-hmm. blast she through the chest. Fires a laser through his chest that could be seen from space. Yeah. And he falls over and he's like, well, I'm dead now. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I, I, they should have explained this. I think this is one of the problems I have with this fight is that the rules are not well explained. Okay. If Carol Danvers hits you with a plasma blast, you are fucking dead. Unless you're Thanos. Yeah. Um, because he's a, you know, yeah. he's purple or whatever. Uh, if you are Carol Danvers and you get hit with a plasma blast, nothing happens yeah. because you're invincible. You're kind of fine. You can throw a planet at Carol Danvers <laughs> and she'll be fine. In fact, I think the only the only person we know that can beat Captain Marvel in the MCU is uh, Infinity Stone. Um, uh, fucking red guy. Um, Jarvis. Or not Jarvis. He's got Jarvis's voice. Uh, the, the guy from. Uh, fuck. Ultron. Vision. Ultron. Ultron. The, but Infinity War or Infinity Stone Ultron right, with, right. with the, yeah. the, all from, the stones and shit. Right. Literally the only, like an all powerful character, literally the only person that can kill Carol Danvers, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, how were you able to kill him with Carol Danvers' power when he has Carol Danvers' power? Like, do you have to have it turned on? If you're using. I, I think it's the, the scrolls have to willingly call forth whatever. Okay. And it's like, if you're concentrating on one. Like you can't use another one, or like there are limits certainly because like they, they for most of that they're only using like two at a time, like yeah. for, for one for each arm. I would like it would make more sense to me if they're like yes, we have powers, but we don't have access to the full thing. Okay, that like, would also work because it, why would you? Yeah, you know. So anyway, Gravik li- like literally gets lasered to death. Yes, falls over and it's like I okay, gonna go now. At the hospital, Fury just shoots Rhodey in the head. <laughs> He's like, I'm done. I'm done talking about this. I'm done arguing whether or not we should bomb the Russians. Rhodey, you're a dick. See you later. Well, what happens is that, like, at one point, Sony is like, President, can you just fucking chill for, like, two minutes? Like, what do you lose by not bombing Russia right. immediately? Which is perfectly reasonable. Yeah. He's like, you could go back and bomb them later. Yeah. Like, you're not taking away your ability to bomb them. It's just you're not doing it right now. He's like, no, we need to bomb them right now. And Fury's like, shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, it's so tight. Yeah, just, you are not helping. <laughs> Shot in the head. That, that poor squirrel lady. Purple blood on the wall, yeah. falls over, turns into a squirrel. You can tell, by the way, you can tell Nick, like, like, the trank darts, I think, but maybe maybe they were all scrolls though. But you could like because he was he was using trank darts on certain people, but like the scrolls you can just shoot him in the head because they have purple blood and it doesn't look very real on I TV. Guess, yeah. yeah. So anyway. Kills Rody. The president looks over his bed, watches him turn into scroll, and is like, get my phone, <laughs> please. <laughs> so it's so, like here, you can borrow mine. Yeah. Give him a phone. He's like, okay, we're not nuking Russia today. So that whole thing is averted, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it basically what ends up happening, all the captive humans are are freed, yep. including Rhodey. Guy goes into the closet and starts freeing them all. Right. And uh, I saw one thing where there like there's there's a uh, there's another area with a bunch of humans that um one of them looked like Evan Peters um a character from WandaVision. Okay. And I saw the picture and I was like, that does kind of look like Evan Peters, but I'm not really sure if it is or not. So it's yeah. Okay. So they, um, I like how they, they tease the audience a little bit and they're like, uh, Rhodey's like, how the fuck long have I been out? And they're like a long time, Mm -hmm. not like right after Tony Stark's funeral or, you know, like, cause I'm I'm not sure they figured that out yet. Cause it like, there are wide reaching, you know, implications. So, um, Ritson gives an address and cause you really think like, Okay, everything okay. is averted. He's yeah, going to be he's, responsible. He's going to like say, "Okay, scrolls, we'll, we'll have a home for you." Right, It'll we'll figure it out. Fucking diplomacy. He yep. gets on TV with this big fucking cut in his head, and he's like, "I've had a bad day." <laughs> and basically, what's going to happen is uh, we're declaring war on the scrolls. I am over this bullshit. We know how to find out if they're scrolls. If you're a scroll, we will find you. We will kill you. God bless America. <laughs> 
goodbye. Honestly, this is exactly the level of nuance and subtlety that I would expect out of an American politician. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. I know. Right. Th- th- this is extremely true to life. Yeah. Not exactly what Fury and, and Talos it's had It's not what anyone right? wanted. Because remember, they had that one. They were, yeah, we're going to go to the president. Like, we're going to go to the president. We're going to save the world. We're gonna, yeah. They're going to thank us. They're going to give us a yeah. home. And guys like, you fucking idiot. Right. That's not going to yeah. happen. And who was right? Yeah. So Nick Fury goes back home and talks to Priscilla. And he's, he's like, I'm, I'm leaving again. And he's like, th- th- basically, the conversation is like, look, if you can find a way to forgive me, you know where to find me. Mm-hmm. And... Fallsworth meets with Gaia, and she's like, "I'm a friend of a, fr- a friend of a friend." Heard wonderful things about you. Why don't yeah. you come work for me? Ritson is crazy because mm-hmm. he's an American, uh, and they've declared war on scrolls. We need to work together and, and make Earth safe. And this isn't like your dad and and Nick. Yeah. We're, we're not going to be friends. We're not friends. We'll use each other. You're u- like you're using me. I'm using you. Right. It's business. That's all this is. Right. But we have a shared goal, so it'll yes. all work out. And like you can, t- guys, like kind of comforted by that she's like i appreciate that okay. you're being so candid about yeah, this yeah I, I can work with this she goes to shake her hand and guy's like nah and she's like no you're, you're right only friends would do that we're not friends <laughs> so um fury calls the president and he's like okay i'm not a fan of your hateful ass speech and uh while he's talking to him there are scenes of scrolls just getting mo- like like the one guy that's like the sean hannity type yeah. just gets mowed just down mowed down in right public um, um the 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 prime minister of England just gets fucking murked while she's giving a speech. Despite not being a scroll. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then there's another shot of, of an attempted killing of a scroll and the scroll just kills all the people trying to kill her. Right. Yeah. So he's like, um, like there are people out there killing humans who aren't even scrolls and shit. It's a mess. And Ritson's like, now nah, we're going to kill them all. Sorry. I'm an American politician. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle I'm from. We live for this shit. Like this is what America is for. Mm-hmm. Fucking freedom, baby. Uh, and he's like, that sounds like the kind of shit a dumbass one term president would say, which right then I was like, oh, yeah, because Harrison Ford is coming in as General Ross, who is going to be the president oh, in the new Captain America okay. movie. Uh, so H- Ritson will not be the president for very long, maybe because Fury kills him. No, they're, they're getting the president from Air Force One to be the yeah. president. <laughs> Get off my plane. <laughs> so Fury is about to return to Saber, his fucking pie in the sky. Mm-hmm. And his wife shows up. I like how he gets, he's like, hold on a second. <laughs> she gets out of her car. They talk. It turns out that the Kree want to make peace with the scrolls out of nowhere, which for me, I was like, why would you say this now? I, I'm willing to bet this has something to do with Carol Danvers. Right. It, it's, it's to set up something. It's yes. to set up the Marvels, right? I just, I was like, this could have been an interesting, like a really interesting story thread throughout the entire story. I mean, it might have only happened now. Yeah. It, it just felt sudden and weird and out of nowhere because I had kind of forgotten the the Kree existed honestly mm-hmm. I thought that like I don't know maybe Carol went back and killed all of them <laughs> <laughs> so she decides to come with Nick well what he says is I need your help you're the best diplomat I know and she's and like she, that's that's true yeah yeah I, I am the best diplomat you know she's like all right I'll help you get started like I'll, I'll, I'll do the opening round of talks or whatever but like I need to come back here and and look after the scrolls yeah because and, and God knows that. your people aren't. right so uh she she shifts into her scroll form and she wants to be called by her birth name because mm-hmm. she's like if people know scrolls are here what the fuck am i doing with priscilla yeah. like here's my alien face and he's like i'ma fuck you so hard you you are the most beautiful yeah. i've ever seen fucking you. grabs her by the head and, and like, they just start sticks making his tongue yeah out. it's just like they are like all over the place they they make out the end yes no post credit they get back on the the shuttle and ride up into yeah. the sky and that's it right um, and okay, so uh, out of ten, I'd give the show about an eight. I would give it, I would give it a seven. Okay. Um, the, there are really there are parts that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, the 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 ending I was really just the Cree thing out of nowhere right at the end. I was like, oh, okay, you're setting up another thing. I don't mm-hmm. mind that specific thing. I, I feel like the whole last episode was a little bit rushed. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree. And I I had a feeling that's how it was going to be when I, I was like, oh, yeah, the next episode's the last one. And it's probably only 30 minutes. And how are they possibly going to tie this up neatly? So anyway, we're going to uh, join our buddies uh, for some Battlefront. Probably talk some more about this and some other Star Wars shit. So join us then. Make sure you like the page. And uh, we'll see you here in a few minutes.